What's going on, fellas? This is Mike D, Mr. Double Down on You with Black Fathers Now. And yo, we got an awesome episode coming on for you today. We got a brother who's actually, at the time of recording, is currently in Korea. So he's on the other side of the world, taking time to chop it up with us on Black Fathers Now. So you know it's going to be something special. And, you know, this is an audio, but we also released a video via YouTube. And if you watch the video, you'll see this brother rocking some Kappa Alpha Psi sweatshirt. Whoa. And I'm not wearing a, a shirt, but I was just like, I got to also represent Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated is the creator of Black Fathers Now. We bring Whoa. in some of these other brothers, but, you know, it's all good. <laughs> You'll see that if you're watching a video, <laughs> but uh, hey, 1911 but, was a beautiful year, right? 1911 was a beautiful year, you know, and, and I'm partial to to one, you know, November the 17th, 1911. But at <laughs> the end of the day, <laughs> it's, all man, Greek. it's all Greek. It's all Greek. It's all love, too, man. But uh, but fellas, we want to welcome my man Jackson Drumgoo. Now Jackson is a husband. He's a dad. He's a soldier. He's an author and he's a speaker who's driven to help dads live fully engaged and live fully alive. I mean, that's a powerful statement. And so at the end of the day, that's an intro that we're gonna build upon, but fellas in the Black Fathers Now family, let's welcome my man all the way from Korea, Jackson Drumgool. What's up, brother? Man, what's going on, brother? Thank you so much for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate you and your platform, brother. Listen, you're doing some amazing work, man. Thanks for having me up, be a part of it. Man, I appreciate you, man. And when we connected on social media and I saw some of the stuff that you had going on, I was like, man, we got to have you here to kind of share your experience, share your journey, share your story, but then also share those inspirations that led you to do a lot of what you do. So thank you for taking yeah. time out of your schedule. To, to, yeah. It was funny about it. We're recording this. This is like 1030 a.m. Eastern. This is like almost midnight where you are in Korea, correct? It's 1230, uh, 1230 a.m. right now on uh, Wednesday morning. Wow. Dedication, dedication, dedication. And uh, so before we jump into the story, I always like to have the brothers give shout outs because who are we without those that are surrounding us that are helping to be the wind beneath our wings? Give a few shout outs, my brother, to those that are in your, in your team, on your team. Listen, my, my, my beautiful wife, Shadonna, my five children, uh, Trey, Lyric, King, Journey, Jansen. Like I say again, thank you guys so much. That's my triplets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those, that's my teammate, man. I got my health, wealth, and legacy family on the East Coast. I got my, my capital Christian family on the, uh, on the West Coast, man. And then over in Korea, of course, all the brothers uh, that who support me, man. I really appreciate it. That's what's up, man. Man, hold on. Did you say triplets? Absolutely, man. After all good things coming through, I keep telling you that, man. Why oh, you, my goodness. And see, fellas, if you're watching this video, you see this, on, you see this stuff that you, oh, my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. This, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Kappa stuff. We, we'll get into this a little bit later. But, <laughs> but congratulations. But, but, but real talk, I mean, you, you actually have triplets. Natural, natural triplets, brother. They're, they're uh, 11 years old, two girls and a boy. Wow. I don't think, I'm trying to think, do I, actually, I have a friend who's here that's actual, actually a triplet. But that's like, so you're like the second person I know that actually yeah. has triplets. Oh, brother, it was, it was, this is life changing. <laughs> change the trajectory of everything. Change everything. Golly, trip. Now, I mean, I mean, we'll get into your story a little bit, but I mean, but okay. So, what was it like to find out that you all were having triplets? Like, what was that moment like? It was. It was one of those. It was, it was surreal, and it's still that way. I mean, we look at each other, my wife and I, and we say, "Man, why us? How us?" <laughs> but, 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 real talk, man. Real talk. So we. I had just returned from like an 18 month deployment. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. You know, so he had a little, he had a little anticipation, a little build up there, but not that. that. A little build up, brother, 18 months. I had a whole lot of build up, but go ahead. Uh, That's uh, another conversation. Another conversation. <laughs> another show for another day. <laughs> but um, but I'll be honest with you, so we, we wanted to have another child. Mm -hmm. At that time, you know, my, um, my son, Trey, he was 12 years old. He's from my, my previous marriage. Okay. He was living with us and we had um, Lyric. She was four years old at the time. And my wife was like, hey, Trey's going to leave the house eventually. Lyric will be by herself. Let's have another child. Mm -hmm. No objection from the brother. I will do my part. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so um, we, we end up you know, conceiving. Lyric walked in the kitchen one day, put her hands on my wife's stomach and said, you have a baby here, a baby there, and a baby there. And walked out. Right. Are you serious? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you they say? Kid, kids say the darndest things, right? 
bro, this was before this, the physicians didn't see anything. No one saw anything. No one knew nothing. No one, knew any, no one said anything to us about multiples. You know, baby here, baby there, and a baby there. Put our hands exactly where the children were. Came to find out, we, we, listen, we didn't find out we were having triplets. The kids were born in March, March 2008. We found out in December that we were having triplets. Whoa, hold on, hold on. So y'all found out literally three and a half months. Bro, listen, doctor, <laughs> I had to, I had, man, my life changed dramatically. I'm talking about I had to remodel the home. <laughs> I, I mean, y'all went from two to five. Here's, 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 what, here's my story, man. I say, I say we went to we went from two to five. Our income went from one, I mean from, from two to one, and my faith level went from hundred to zero, brother. I mean, I was like, God, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? But brother, you know, honestly, man, the God was faithful, man, and, and the community came in, helped us out. We were in Atlanta at the time. Uh -huh. The community came in, uh, my headquarters, I was working at First Army in Atlanta, and the entire headquarters came together, brother, and, and the community just wrapped their arms around us. And it's been a blessing. But more importantly, man, the triplets have really been a glue uh, in our marriage, for one thing, because we needed that glue at the time. Just being mm -hmm. just keep transparent, we needed that glue at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's literally changed the trajectory of my entire life and my ministry. And maybe my ministry, but mm -hmm. changed, changed my whole trajectory, brother, because I was doing some other stuff. Absolutely. You know, in entrepreneurship, man. And then when I saw, when I had, when I saw this need for fatherhood um, in my own life, mm -hmm. I needed encouragement. And so it was one of those things that it was, it was birthed out of a, a lot. A lot was birthed during that time period. Put it that way. Not you, just you, you know, it was interesting about how, you know, you all of a sudden started looking to serve, but you were also scratching your own itch because you needed that support. You needed to grow. And so it's like in the process of you growing and becoming more of who you're supposed to be in life and what God's called you to do. You're yeah. like, you know what? Why not share this process? Because I'm not unique in that sense. There are other brothers out there that need exactly what it is I'm looking to, to gain as well. It, it, exactly, man. If we go back a little bit, I tell you, like I say God always gives us, either, he gives us prophecies and pivots. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I love it. Prophecies and, and, and so I can talk, we can talk about the prophecies from 25 years ago, but it was some of the pivots that really, that really got me to this point, man. Um, and so like I said, again, I went through a divorce, man, 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, 20 something years ago. And I don't know if we can, we, can we jump into it? We yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. This is your story, brother. I'm just here to pull out the nuggets. Yeah, man. So 20 something years ago, I go through a divorce. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a young 20 something year old kid, man. And, and I started over, just started over from zero. And I stood before the judge in Clarksville, Tennessee. Um, and he just like, just ripped me up and down. Tell me how sorry of a man I was. Mm. I'm like, I know I ain't. I mean, I'm, I'm ignorant. Yeah, I got it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm inadequate. I got it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm ill-equipped. Mm -hmm. Okay, I take I take that. But I, I ain't no sorry dude, man. You know, I ain't no I ain't no, I ain't no bum. Mm -hmm. But every every narrative at that time in the '90s, every narrative supported that perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, of, of a young black man. Absolutely. You, know, you, you sorry, you nasty, you ain't gonna do nothing ever. I say, sir, I'm going through two different. I'm in two different colleges right now, bringing in letters from the dean. You know. This is all I have. I, you know, I, don't, I don't have anything else. I've given her all the money. I've given her everything. Now, keep in mind, my ex-wife and I, we're, still, we're, 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 we're great friends. All right? mm -hmm. I said we were just young. Absolutely. We shouldn't have been married at the time. Absolutely. Um, but then we had that son. You know, Trey, you know, he was two, three years old at the time, man. And, and, and I'm like, man, how, first of all, how am I going to be man enough to take care of him? What am I going to do physically, you know, to, take, to financially take care of this young man? Mm -hmm. And I did, I did everything I could. I took care of him. Um, but it was, it was really that, it was out of that, how can I say it, man? Um, that misfortune that launched this ministry. Mm. Was, during that time period, in the, like I say, I'm talking about the 90s, man, where, where nobody was supporting, um, um, you know, the, the, the black narrative, the black male narrative. Absolutely. If, if I remember, if I remember, if I remember right, man, it was Clinton during the nineties that mm -hmm. coined the phrase dead beat dad. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, you know, it was during that time period, man. And so again, at that time, I fit that bill because mm -hmm. the, the courts made, the courts had me going through counseling just to see my son. Wow. I was paying, I was paying like, man, a, a crazy amount of child support just to, just to be around him. And then every time I was around him, because again, my ex-wife, she and I are friends now, but the stories that she was getting from her friends and her family and all her support system was continue to crush him, wow. beat him down, crush him, crush him, crush him. 
Now, if you got her on the phone today, she, you know, she and I, she, we laugh about it and we joke about it now because of, again, that's 20 something years ago. Absolutely, absolutely. We evolve and grow, absolutely. We evolve and grow. But that was one of the biggest pivots. Man, I saw, I saw how I was treated and I knew who I was as a man. Mm. I, I said, dude, if I, can, if I ever get the opportunity to pour into the lives of other men, to help them to feel more confident and, uh, about who we are as men, who we are as black men, who we are as, who we are as men as a whole, because it's not really, again, it's, it's, it's not about us, it's, it's beyond us. That's what Absolutely. I it's, not, it's not about us, it is beyond us. It is for the sake of our seed. And so Absolutely. For, for the sake of our seed, we have to feel, we, what I, I, use, I like to use the word efficacious. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I, I, we, we, we begin to feel confident. Hello, I can do this. I can raise my child. And I remember I was, uh, at the time, like I, said, I was going to University of, Southern Cal University of South Carolina at that time. And I was um, uh, walking across campus, just feeling like a, like a slug, man, because I could, you know, could barely take care of my kid. And, and, and every, this full society was saying I was a, I was a deadbeat dad. Mm -hmm. And it was a counselor uh, on campus. He was a, he was a therapist. Mm -hmm. and I asked him, I spent some time and talk to him. So I don't have any money to pay you. I just want to talk to you. And so he said, he said, hey, brother, just come to my office every day at this time. And for the next, next year, I'm yours. Mm. And so he had me to answer some questions about me, answer some questions about my family, answer some questions and dig deep, man, um, to help me to make better decisions for the future. And the first question he asked me was, can you raise your son without your ex-wife? Mm. Do, you do you feel like you can do that? You know, this, this is the 90s, man. This is deep. You know, yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, can you raise your son without your, your ex-wife? And it took, me a, it took me a minute to answer that question. And I, when I discovered, yeah, I can. I, I can do that. And he said, okay, why are you selecting the women that you selected in your life? Mm. What is it about you and what is it about them? Why do you keep picking these type of women? And it took me a while to answer that question. And here's, and here's what he said. Here's what he came out with, man. He said, um, he, he, again, he pulled these answers out of me. He said, you're a protector. You're a natural father figure. And so, so, so naturally, women who need to be protected are drawn to you. Wow. They're drawn to you. And so you're drawing these type of women because you're a father figure, you're a protector, you're a provider, you know, you're a pattern. You know, so all these, he, he, he laid it out. Mm -hmm. And this is why you're drawing these type of women. He said, so whether or not, if you're there or not, she still needs to be protected. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, he, so you need to find, some, so he, he said, okay, now we got that part already. Name, he said, give me five negotiables, five things that you, that you, you know, five negotiables in a relationship that you can have. Because again, at the time, brother, I'm, 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 I'm a young 20 something year old man trying Absolutely. to put two and two. And he said, okay, five negotiables. So the five negotiables, you know, he said, okay, uh, I didn't care. If, I didn't care if the woman I was dealing with was white, black, Asian, mm -hmm. I didn't care if she was 300 pounds, I didn't care if she was educated. You know, I came up with five things that they were kind of throwaways. Mm -hmm. And then he said, okay, give me five non-negotiables, stuff that you absolutely, intrinsically, holistically have to have in your spouse to help you to, to accomplish your vision in life and, and help you accomplish the things and raise your child. Five things, brother. Mm -hmm. I, I needed a woman to, um, uh, to fear God more than she feared me because, mm. because I knew how influential my mouth was. I knew that I could talk a cat off a fish truck. I Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You know yourself, right? I, I know me. Again, this, this is after a year, man, of just digging deep and, and figuring out how not to make this mistake ever again going mm -hmm. forward. All right. Number two, a woman who had a great relationship with her father. Mm. Because fathers are the foundation of a home. Ooh. And if a, woman, if a woman has a great relationship with her father, whether her father left or not, she has a great relationship with her. She understands the protocol of a household. She understands where everybody sits. And again, I'm not above anybody. Fathers, I believe, mm -hmm. are we're not, you know, when we, people, the Bible talks about father, the head being, the, excuse me, the man being the head. And I understand that spiritually. Mm -hmm. but, but men kind of, we, we, throw that, we throw that over our women saying, okay, I, I lord over you and you must do what I tell you to do. Submit, mm -hmm. submit. No, man. You don't, you don't deserve, you serve. Absolutely. You know? Ooh, I like that. You don't deserve, you serve. You don't deserve, you serve. Mm. There's, listen, you can have the most beautiful edifice on a, on a foundation, but the foundation's cracked and broken, brother. The building will crumble. It right? will. You can, have, you can have the best furniture in that building. You can have the best timber. Mm. But if that foundation is, is cracked, first of all, they're going to condemn it. Absolutely. And the building will crack. So the fathers are the foundation. So I needed her to understand protocol of a household. Number three, I wanted a woman that wanted to be with me, that wanted to be with me and didn't need to be with me. Mm. Wanted to be with me and need, didn't need to be with me. Mm. Um, 
fourth thing was that my job was not my identity. Mm. That, 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 that didn't make me who I am. If I was a lawyer, a doctor, if I was a trash compact, whatever, that didn't matter. Mm. If I was a construction worker, that didn't matter. All right? If I sold cars, that didn't matter. That's not who I am mm -hmm. as a person. And number five, children are my legacy, and I have to have several of them. Right? Mm. And, and, and so when I laid those five down, literally, I, I mean, dude, as you see, I, I remember that. That was 26 Absolutely. years ago. Absolutely. That, that's, that's, that's who I am. That's who I am. And so when I finally met my wife a few, like a year or two later, I laid them out for her. Hey, this is, these are my five. These are my five non-negotiables. And she sat back. It was, uh, it was May 27, 2001, 9.45 p.m. in Augusta, Georgia when I met her, right? And I laid out, these are my five. This is what I got to have. Bam. And she said, okay, I can do that. No argument, brother. Mm. No argument. That day, from that day forward, when I shared my vision with her and where I was trying to go up my life, she immediately tried to find where she fit, where she fit in. And now, what? Now, now, when, when, when did this happen? May twenty seventh of what year? Friday, Friday night, two thousand one, nine forty five p.m. All right, it, on, Richmond, on Richmond Hill Road in Augusta, Georgia. X oh. five. <laughs> wow, off of Richmond Hill Road in Augusta, Georgia, and I was born at University Hospital in Augusta, Georgia. Stop it, brother. I was born, listen, St. St. Joseph Hospital, man. Augusta, Dude, Georgia. I went, I graduated from Westside High School in Augusta, Georgia. I went to Glen Hills, brother. Stop playing. Oh, my. What year did you graduate from Glen Hills? I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 80s, man. Back in the 80s. Oh, man, I got a lot. We got, we going to talk off because, we, you know, I'm, again, born and raised in Augusta, from Augusta. I'm whole family from Augusta. Yeah, Dorsey's, Thurman's, all of that, man. That's. Hold on. No, the, the Dorsey's and the Thurman's, stop it, man. Kim Thurman. Yeah. Kim Thurman is my aunt. Man, stop, bro. Yep, yep. <laughs> Kim, Kim, look, Kim, Kim Thurman is my mama's baby sister. Stop it, man. You better stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we, just, oh. we just saw them a couple weeks, like actually a few weeks ago for my 40th birthday party. Stop it, man. Mm -hmm. we, we, we talk offline. We, we hey, talk we offline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, this is amazing. We connected on social media. I didn't know anything yeah. about him and Augusta and all of that. He didn't know anything about me and Augusta and all. Come to find uh -huh. out, there's a deeper connection. Mm. I love mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and I'm going to tell you what's interesting, man. You, you, you mentioned something about these five negotiables and five non-negotiables. And I, I want the brothers to pay attention to that because at the end of the day, we have to compromise in life on some things. But then yeah. there are certain things that are non-negotiable that honestly, that are hard, fast, look, these are it. And if these things are not in place, I'm not going to have the opportunity nor the wherewithal to move forward because I know that something is not in line with who I am. And so that was extremely powerful, but I'm going to take it back even a little bit. What was even more powerful, and you kind of glossed over it a little bit, but you sought to have the counselor sit down with you. It wasn't like he said, hey, Jackson, I want you to come to my office. You sought him. So it's basically you went out and you went after it. You were seeking answers. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, one, see, one, of, the things, one of the things that we have to realize is that um, the mind that causes the problem can't solve the problem. Mm. You know, because you have too much you're tooling with, too much you're toggling with. And you're going to always tell yourself what you want to hear. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so I, I, I absolutely I actually sought out help because I needed to work some, I need to work some things out and compartmentalize some things. And here's the thing, I did not want to repeat my mistakes. Mm. You know, we, 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 we know, we know what, what, what he said, what Einstein said, man, you know, mm -hmm. um, about, 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 uh, Oh yeah. And say definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Absolutely. That's my, that's my point, brother. And so, um, I wanted, I wanted different results. I sought different results. And I hit and another thing, man, I knew there was a greater man inside of me. I just know how to, I didn't know how to dig him out. Ooh, ooh, hold up. See, that's something that we got to sit on for a second because at the end of the day, there is a greater man inside of you. I just did not know how to dig that out. The thing that was so powerful about it was you recognized that there was a greater man inside and then you also recognized the notion of I don't know how to pull this thing out. And so exactly. and I think, fellas, pay attention to that because, you know, there is so much inside of each and every one of us. Again, everybody's not you know, charged with becoming some billionaire. Everybody's not charged with creating some multinational company. Everybody's not charged with being the face of something, but everybody's right. charged with doing something. And there's a greater man inside of you. And for those of us that are really honest with ourselves, there are some of us that have the capacity to pull it out. 
right? But I would say that more often than not, most of us have a greater man inside of us, but we have just not come to the, the conclusion or the understanding that we don't know how to effectively pull that greater man out and we need help. We need help, exactly. See, you know, think about it, we do. We, we discover our purpose progressively. Mm. We discover our purpose progressively. It doesn't happen overnight. So again, some people have a strong family, strong, strong family structure where the father is, is cognizant like yourself mm. and like, I, like I've become over the years where you, where you realize that you, our job is to help our children to find, follow, and finish their God-given purpose. Absolutely. Help them, help them to discover, to develop, and then to deploy their gifts into the world. You know, now that, now that I know my job as a, as a patriarch, now that mm. I know my job as a father, those things I do intentionally. And I don't just do them for my children biologically, I do them for my children by choice. Mm. You know, I, I, I purposely do these type of things now because, I, again, it took me decades and it took me <laughs> years of pain to go through this to discover my purpose progressively. Mm. So when, I, when I'm able to help someone else to identify theirs early, I say, hey, this is what I see in you. And that's what mm. we talk about. We talk about the prophecies and the pivots. Mm -hmm. you know, so most of the pivots I've had in my life has been some man walk up to me and say, dude, there's something greater in you. Mm. You know, a, a college professor or, or a pastor or somebody say, hey, 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 man of God, I see something in you. And I'm not feeling like a man of God right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, about, I'm falling off a doggone bar stool somewhere. Mm. Or, or, or tumbling out of a hotel room, whatever. Absolutely, it is. absolutely. And they say, "Hey, brother, I see what you're doing right now, but it's not. This is not. This is that's not, not you. It's not you. I see Dude. what you're doing, but it's not you." Dude. Man, I'm gonna tell you what, what was so powerful about that. And fellas, pay attention to this. It's like the, the power of encouragement, the power of helping people to see stuff that they can't always see themselves. That's why we are so important. That's why platforms like this and platforms yeah. in which Jackson is creating, especially geared towards us, especially geared towards black men, because historically it has not been a whole lot out there to do that. It's so important because it's speaking and pouring into the brothers in which we maybe historically have not had that, that thing pouring into us. We need someone to help us at times see things that we cannot see. So therefore, if you see something in another brother, if you see something in someone, in spite of their current circumstance, in spite of what they look like on the outside, take the moment to pour that into them because you don't know what that little word, what that little wisdom, what that little inspiration can do to help that person pivot. And what people don't realize about a pivot, think about basketball. A pivot, yeah. a, a pivot with, in basketball, one of, your foot, one of your feet stays put and the other foot is moving. So mm. a pivot is not I'm up and I'm running in a different direction. It's that I'm actually just turning in a different direction. That's it. And that's all. So your word of inspiration, your word of wisdom, pouring into that other brother who might not have somebody to pour into him on a daily basis can help him to keep that pivot foot down and maybe turn and nudge in a direction that puts him on a path that he didn't think was possible, but you see that in him. It's incumbent upon you as a responsibility, fellas. We got to do that for each other. For man, each that, other. That, for real. That is beautiful. That, that is beautiful. And, and I tell you, some, some of the pivots I've had, man, have been from, and I tell you, some of the most powerful pivots I've had have been from individuals that don't look like us. Absolutely. It happens yeah. from everybody. You got to be open to it. See, that, to your point, th that, man, I'm going to tell you, what's so powerful about what you just said is the fact that you must be open. If you, you in essence, seek, you find what you seek, Right. Like what you, you wanted some clarity. You wanted to understand yourself. You wanted to pull this thing out from inside of you that was there, that was buried. So you actually sought out a therapist to help you. You were seeking it. So that's what you found. So in regards to you seeking an opportunity to be your best, it might come from another brother. And I'm encouraging the brothers to be that if possible. But on the other hand, it might come from somebody who's from a different culture that speaks a different language, who doesn't look like you. If you're open and you're seeking, you will find it. Go ahead, That's my brother. Exactly right. That's right. I always say wisdom is in the heart of the hearer, man. Ooh. Wisdom, you say, I, you know, eyes in the beauty, beauty of the beholder, but wisdom mm. is in the heart of the hearer. Mm. Again, keep in mind, man, the prophet, the prophet heard a word from God from a donkey. Mm. Mm. From a donkey. So again, wisdom is in the heart of the hearer, man. I've heard, I've heard some, some crazy people say some amazing things. It's how you receive it and how it pours, how, like you say, how it pricks your spirit. Because you I, know when God's speaking to you. I've I like heard some. I heard some crazy people say some amazing things. Oh, boy, that's, that's a bar. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's, that's it, man. That's it. And so it was, it, was those, it was those pivots. It was those pivots in my life, man, that, that got me here. It, it, this was not my plan. Mm. You know what I mean? This was, this was not my plan. Um, it, was, it was literally God's plan, brother. And he's opened so many doors um, to this. I'm like, I can't, I can't deny this. I cannot walk through. Because, again, 
It's not about me. It's beyond me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, and it's not for, it's not necessarily even for the men. Mm-hmm. It's for the, when I realize it's for the children, when I realize that, that, that kids are, are, are not being protected, that, that kids are not being provided for, not because men, black men are sorry or other men are sorry. No, men just honestly just don't feel, don't feel encouraged enough, don't feel confident enough that they can handle it, that they can do it. Mm-hmm. But they, man, listen, we're amazing people. We're an amazing people. And kids, they don't need a perfect dad. They just need a present dad. Mm. They need a present dad. Somebody's there. Mm, One thing I say, go ahead, brother. No, I was about to say, that's so powerful. I have a buddy, man. He uh, created this platform called Fatherhood is Lit. And the tagline is presence over presence. Meaning yeah, your presence over giving them presents. And I mean, especially, you know, we're recording this prior to the Christmas season. It's going to release, you know, uh, you know, into 2020. But at the end yeah. of the day, your presence is much more valuable than the presence you give. Be Absolutely. mindful of that. Absolutely. I have, I have a, let's say, I came up in a, in a neighbor, I, came, I grew up in Terrace Mountain. You don't know okay. You know Terrace. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And during, let's say, during the, the 70s, man, you had um, all these amazing black fathers. Mm-hmm. Over in the, my father included, man. My father, he served in Vietnam War, Korean War, uh, but the whole neighborhood was full of those, what I call, man, modern day giants. Mm. You know, you had, you had the first black mayor. Uh, you know, uh, Ed McIntyre. Yeah, absolutely. You had the Prince family. You had the Watkins family. You had, uh, you know, Henry Brigham. Mm-hmm. His family there. You know, you had uh, the Myers family. You uh-huh. Know, yeah, yeah, Mr. Myers. Had, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, you, you had all these, I mean, right there. You know, you can put a, you can take a spoon, man, just dig it in that neighborhood. You're going to come out with quality. Absolutely. You know I mean? And so you had all those men that you could go from porch to porch, yard to yard, street to street, and they would help shape, you know, you get a little bit, you had Scott's, you know, you had Joe Scott on mm-hmm. one end of the neighborhood. Like I said, you had Doug Prince dad on the other end of the neighborhood. So you weren't going, and you had my dad on this end of the neighborhood. So you weren't going to leave that neighborhood foolish. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and it seems like, again, it seems like we, and we, we got away from that. We dropped our guard. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I, and because we were lulled to sleep. Mm-hmm. We were lulled to sleep in the 80s. And, and we can talk about that, at, you know, mm-hmm. at, at, at another time. But it's those men that I pull from, brother. I pull every story that I've ever, I've ever spoke about, every story that I ever wrote about, every, everything that I am is because of all those men in that neighborhood, man. On Tate Road, on Truxton Road, on mm. Kip Drive, on, on Bell Mead Drive, all those men that have, that have some have gone on. My father's still alive. My father's 90 years old, man. Wow, that's and a I, blessing. I, I, exactly. I, I honor him every day, brother. I tell him if I could, if I could be a tenth of the man that he is, I, I'd be all right, mm. you know, they raised us, you know, deal, man. They raised us with with with, with, the, with the half of the money that we make today. Absolutely, half of the money we make today, brother. And and they just live so much honor, so much integrity. But the most important thing, though, he, my, I'll be honest with you, my father never finished high school, brother. Mm-hmm. Never finished, never finished high school. But his presence was always there. Mm-hmm. His, his presence, he, he was always there. If I ask any of my any of my any of my nieces and nephews, where can you find your grandpa right now? Same place he was twenty seven years ago. Mm. 30 years ago, 40 years ago. He's gonna, when he come home from work, he's always in that den. Now, all of, all of his kids went to college. Everybody's doing extremely well. He made certain of that. All right, he worked, he's worked his butt off his whole life. But he was always in that den when he came home and you could always go sit beside him and just glean some wisdom from him, mm. whatever it may be. And he was raised without a father. His father died when he was five years old. So I never knew any of my grandfathers. Mm. All I knew was him. He could have left. He mm. could have walked out, but he didn't. He was there, he was present. That's all that matters, brother. You know, and it's, it's interesting, man. He chose to be there. He understood the responsibility. But then the other men in your neighborhood oh, represented right. the village. And so yeah. it's, 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 the, it's the African principle of it takes a village to raise a child. But a lot of times we omit the fact that grown men, we need a village around us as well. Because some of us were not fortunate or some were not fortunate to grow up in that village where they had these examples to pull from that basically helped to get you in line and to give you wisdom, to give you insight, to help redirect, to help you to pivot in different directions. And so to your point, I mean, the tagline of this podcast, Black Fathers Now is bringing the village to the brothers. Because at the end of the day, we all, I mean, the reality of now, because we've been so fragmented and we're all split up and all of that and have hyper-focused on the nuclear family, not necessarily this whole collective village that we really have, we have to bring the village back to the brothers for us to start understanding the value prop of being that village for those around us. We have to start looking at kids. You got five, I got two, but if I come in contact with any other kids, they're mine. They're mine. Like, I, I mean, biological or not, they're my that's kids right. and that's how I'm going to look at it. And as brothers, 
as you know, black men, as black fathers, we have to start looking at that in that particular manner. These kids are all ours. And if we approach it that way, then they can have the stories of Mr. Myers and Mr. Brigham and your dad yep. and all that in Terrence Manor growing up because it's like, that's what it's supposed to be. It's a village. Exactly. It's a village. Brother, you said, you said so much, man. I tell you, uh, Patch Adams, he's the, the famed. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that. He said, we need each other more than we can ever imagine, man. I say the, the tagline on, 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 my, on my latest book that I put out there, man, is we are in this, we're on this journey together. Yes. And that's, and that's the thing, brother. We are truly on this journey together, every last one of us. And, and to your point, when we realize that we need each other, man, it's, it is. It's platform just like this that mm -hmm. creates that village, man, because, I, I, dude, dude, I need you, brother. I need you, too. And that's why we're here. That's why we've connected. And what's even, but see, check this out. It goes back to the concept of intention. See, I'm intentionally yes. reaching out to brothers. You're intentionally reaching out to brothers and folks who can help to build and grow yes. and kind of add value here and add value there. But then, because of we, we were so intentional about that, we didn't even realize that, dude, we came from the same place. We know the same people. We're connected on a deeper level, and we've just scratched the surface so, from a social media perspective. And so, dude, I, I'm just saying, be intentional, be focused, walk in the path. This is a, I, I literally, I reference this probably every other episode. There's one of my favorite books of all time is The Alchemist. As you start pursuing your personal legend, I say the creator of the universe conspires to help you along on your journey. Just start walking. Brothers, start yeah walking don't right. wait on things to open up don't wait on things to clear up don't wait on things to be perfect start walking if you got this thing this freaked your spirit walk go i promise you you're gonna have scenarios start popping up that are gonna help to usher you along but you must walk if you don't walk it ain't gonna happen man say that again if you don't walk it ain't gonna happen. i love it brother that's mm -hmm. that's exactly right man i say that every morning the universe is conspiring to help me to win mm, come on Firing to help me to win. People, people come out the woodwork to help me to win. But I have to say that to myself because again, we blocked ourselves so long. Yes. We blocked ourselves so long that no, we can't have any help. No, this this goal isn't for me. No, I can't stand on those stages with these people. No, I don't. I'm not. I'm not gifted enough. I'm not articulate enough. I'm not. I don't have a pre, I don't have a, I don't have a pedigree. I don't have. No, no, no. The entire universe is conspiring to help me to win. Mm. Because again, because it's, it's not about me. It's beyond me. It's for the people behind behind my obedience. Mm. The individuals on the other side of my obedience. So I have to jump. I got to walk. I remember sitting down with a, uh, I had a business idea some years ago. Uh, I'm like yourself, a, a serial entre entrepreneur, man. Mm -hmm. And so I, I contacted one of my, one of my uh, business mentors and uh, I said, can you meet me? I want to share an idea with you. He said, sure, I'll meet you, you know. Uh, so he sat down with me, we were having coffee and I started laying my idea out, my business plan. He said, Jackson, stop. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear your plan. I don't want to see your plan. He said, just get on the bike and ride it because it's easier to maneuver by mover maneuver a bicycle when it's moving mm. you're, stand, you're standing still you can, you, all you're gonna do is fall so either way you got to make an adjustment either either your business is going to be extremely successful or it's going to fail miserably epically fail mm -hmm. either either way you have to make an adjustment just get the ride mm. and and that's and that's that's exactly what i do man so i'll come up with a one page business plan every now and then and i'll, I'll start riding but guess mm. what yeah. Justin, I love what you said, brother. Just keep, just keep walking. Once you're pricked, just go. That's it. That's it. And, and so, and so, kind of jumping into some of the stuff that you have going on, man. You know, you're an author. You're a speaker. You know, you created this devotional guide for fathers. Man, share with the brothers some of the stuff that you have going on, and um, and just kind of put it out there, man. I'd love for them to hear about what you got popping, man. Well, like I say, but again, like I say, about ten years ago, man, while in Iraq, in Iraq man, I um. I um, want to compile all of these different stories and different uh, conversations I was having with all the brothers on different teams that I was working with. Um, and so I started writing these, these, these different stories and again, real life stories about fatherhood. And uh, literally I published the book from my desk in Iraq mm. and I, I start passing it out to brothers on the teams. I mean, Iraqis, I didn't care. Ugandans, I didn't care. I'm just passing out and brothers coming back to my desk. Like, Dude, this is some meat and potatoes, bro. I mm -hmm. can't, I can't stop reading this. And so I put it out there. And that was 10 years ago, man. It led to some, it led to some interviews. It led to, um, led to me, me being awarded the National Father of the Year with Bill Clinton back in 2013. Wow. I began, I began working with other fathers and fatherhood organizations, um, uh, even, like, even while deployed, creating different organizations like, like the, the Morality Empowerment Network, men, hmm. you know, help, 
often fathers to live fully engaged and fully alive while deployed or away from home. Because typically when you get away from home and you, you drop your guard. Absolutely. You, all, anything can happen. Absolutely. And I, I really want men to go back into their homes whole. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to go back to their home, their home home. And so we created that organization. Um, since then, as they've just been traveling the world, man, uh, uh, South America, Brazil, um, all over the all over the United States, man, just working with fathers, doing different workshops, um, health, wealth, and legacy tours. Mm. Um, so, and, and then lately, like I said, I just did a uh, finish up a devotional uh, mm. called "They Call Me Daddy." Um, you know, we're on this we're on this journey together. And this one, we, we're trying to get a hundred thousand copies into the hands of young fathers today. And again, this has nothing to do with money. Has nothing to do with uh, with me. I, I want I want young people, I want fathers, not young fathers, old fathers, seasoned fathers, grandfathers, to feel confident about fatherhood. Mm. Um, still, it's filled with inspirational stories. It's filled with strategies and different practice, different tools and tips on on uh, on how to on how to manage your household. Mm. Uh, and so, I, what, one thing I do teach is helping fathers to lead where they live. Mm. But what what drove a lot of this is I see military officers, business leaders, CEOs, man, like I say, content of just crush it at work, do amazing mm. things at work, home runs at work, and then file out at home. Mm-hmm. I've, I've met several, like say, leaders who do amazing stuff at the office and their wife and children can't stand them. Man, dude, can I, can I, can I park there for a second? Um, that's one of the things that's so interesting as we idolize as we kind of put people up on pedestals we see that they're gifted in certain areas but just because you're gifted in one area one aspect of life does not mean that you're automatically gifted in something else everything you touch is not gold yes you might have business success but your relationship or your communication style or something might not necessarily line up so and it goes back to what you mentioned earlier how we all have this thing, this greatness inside of us. We don't mm-hmm. always know how to how to dig it out, or we don't have that shovel to dig it out. So entrepreneurially or financially, you might have that down pat. You might have the shovel and know how to go and you know create a million dollar business with the snap of your finger by the end of the month. That might be a gift of yours. But as it right. pertains to you and your wife, you might need a little bit of help. Or as it pertains to you and your kids, you might need a little bit of help. And sometimes if you have success over here, you might default into, I can just buy my way out. Well, she got all the cars she wants. She got the house that she wants. The kids got everything they need. What else do they want from me? They want you. Come on, brother. See, that's, like, that's one thing we do. We do. We hide behind our gifts. Not, not mm-hmm. we just black men, but, but we as people, we hide behind our gifts because it's comfortable. Absolutely. Again, when we, when we, talk, about the, the, when we talk about being anointed or being gifted, again, your gift is not for you. Mm-hmm. Your gift is for other people. Your gift mm. is for the service of, of the community. Your gift absolutely. is for the service of other people. Everything else, you're right. You're absolutely right, brother. We got to work on. We have to. We we have to work on those things, and that's where we need one another. That's where we can literally, brother. I'm telling you, I get phone calls over here three o'clock in the morning, uh, five o'clock in the morning, uh, all throughout the day from some powerful brothers that say, "Dude, I, I need some help in this particular area." And mm-hmm. Like like yourself, man. Mm-hmm. I, I shut everything down and pour into them mm-hmm. because because they realize if, when a person realizes I need help. They need help and they reach out to you, man. You're obligated. Absolutely. No you're choice. Obligated, you're obligated to pour into them, man. And so um that again, that's 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 what we do, man. So we have um I have a podcast as well called Fully Engaged and Fully Alive, where where we do that exact same thing, man. We um mm-hmm. pour into the life of people, words of encouragement. Uh we talk about I I have three principles that I constantly talk about, whether I'm um uh, I call them three bins. Mm-hmm. Bins of health, wealth, and legacy. I believe those are some of the three. Uh, a three-legged stool in life, man, that if, if one of those things fall, you know, you got, you got some problems. Our mm. health, health and you can be the most gifted, most powerful individual in the world. Um, but if you're not taking care of your physical body, you're not taking care of this temple, then it's all for not. Absolutely. You know, our wealth is, a, our wealth, we have to, we have to be fiscally responsible. We have to, we talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about, you know, a debt management. We talk about, just again, fiscal responsibility. And then our legacy, nothing else is more important than what we leave behind. I say there's no success without a successor. Mm. No success without a succession plan. And mm. so I teach, I teach men how to build vision statements and mission statements for their families. Because we, we do in business, and again, I have an MBA, you know, you know, in, in, in built businesses and stuff, man. And we start off with, a, with what am I, what's my mission? What are we here for? Where are we, what are we establishing this business for? Well, again, what did God establish this family for? Why did you and I get married? Why are we here? At 200, 
at 90 years old, when we turn around, what would we have accomplished? What is our, why, why are we together? And so when you can sit down with your bride and say, sweetie pie, darling, why are we together? I know you're cute. I know you got great legs, mm -hmm. but why, why, why are you here in my life and why am I here in your life? What are we to accomplish with the five children that God gave us? And so when we're able to establish, this is our mission statement, this is our vision, here's what happens. Now you've given the entire family purpose. Mm. Now, you give, now you're giving your children purpose. If you look through the Bible, man, and you see a, a, a certain family, they're the tanners. This family, they're the blacksmiths. This family here, they make gold. This family here does woodwork. That's, that, that's the mission of that particular family. That's what they're put on that planet to do. You know, I can name families in, in when we grew up, mm -hmm. families, a family full of educators. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody in the family is an educator. Everybody in the family is in the medical field. Everybody mm -hmm. in the family. That, that, listen, brother, that wasn't by accident. Mm -hmm. It's a legacy. It's a legacy. Some grandfather, some man, somewhere, some, or some, somebody a long time ago said, you're going to go in the medical field. I know, listen, I know you're, I know you're a great artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, listen, I know you like to cut grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you are going to study medicine because... This is not, it's not about you and about your happiness and about your comfort. You have to take care of the rest of the family forever and ever and ever. You know, mm. and so as, as, as dads, that's what we do. I, I'll share this with you, brother. Mm. In, um, in another book I have coming out called about, talking about the, the power of the patriarch. Mm. And that's, we've gotten away from that word, the patriarch. Mm. You know, patriarch is one of those foundational words. You know, father, when we talk about father, we're talking about Abba, the source, that's the mm. Hebrew. And in Greek, it's pater, P-A-T-E-R. And that's where we get the word pattern from, blueprint. All right, so we, if, if, when fathers understand that we have five principles to make an impact, five principles, and I'm, uh, I'll share them with you real quick if you got a second, brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Five patterns, so five, five, five principles to make an impact. A father has to pattern. Again, he has to, he has to set the blueprint for the family. Mm. Number two is provision. Mm. Now, this, this provision, like, like I say, I'm a, I'm a full-time military guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a college professor at two different universities. Mm. I, write, I write books, I, I speak, all that stuff. Now, all that stuff, dude, and again, I was thinking that that was my, I was providing you know, mm -hmm. financial, financial stability for my family. Man, I got, I, I got woke up one morning probably about two or three years ago, and God said, son, I need you to really look up the word provision. What does it mean? Mm. Because I'm thinking I'm doing, I think I'm doing the, you know, the right thing, taking care of my family. Everybody mm -hmm. eat, you're driving good, you're eating good, you're looking Absolutely. good. Mm -hmm. okay, so so I'm, I'm, I'm straight. The word provision means provideer. It's, it's from the Latin word provideer, which means to provide vision. Mm, provision. Provide, provide provision. vision. I'm, wow. I'm to provide vision for my family. So again, that means going ahead of my family, sitting down with, with, with my COO, my chief operation officer, my wife, as a, mm. and I'm, I'm a CEO. So I sit down and say, okay, why are we established? Why, are we, why did we establish this LLC called a family? Mm. What, are we, what are we supposed to be doing? And, we, and you lay out that vision. And again, there are tools for that. Absolutely. Franklin, FranklinColby.gov.com, look at whatever you can look at. But create a family, create a family vision and a family mission statement. Bam, now you got it in paper. Now you got it in writing. Mm. So here, here's, the, here's the leadership principle there. The leadership principle there is whether I'm in the house or not in the house, the business, the business, the vision, the family still goes on. And again, I'm in the military. I spend years away from the house at times. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Months. I have to be, I have to rest assured that the family is still rolling. Absolutely. That, that my legacy is still rolling. Number three, like I said, I mentioned pattern. I mentioned provision. Mm -hmm. Now, protection, protection. Mm. Father, our patriarch is supposed to protect. Now, not just, of course, physical protect. Absolutely. You have to protect the ears and the eyes and the ears and the eyes gates of your team. Absolutely. Your you got to protect what's, what's coming into the house. Protect, I mean, there's, n protect their friends. Be very, very, uh, proactive in, in picking their friends. Again, when we grew up, mm -hmm. we couldn't just hang around anybody. No, no. But well, first off, you couldn't sneak around no way because we had back four generations of people all around. So whether I knew you or not, somebody knew me. Oh, you, you're Earl and Maxine's grandson. Oh, you're, yeah. you're Jap and Leona's grandson. Oh, you're Keith and Maggie's son. Oh, you know what? You're Kim and Dave's nephew. Oh, you're so, man, all of that. All yes. of that. I mean, literally. I mean, yeah. you stop and you think about it. It's like, yeah, yeah, you, that's that protection. <laughs> that's, that, that's this village we're talking about here. Yes. That's, the, that's what we're talking about here. And the fourth, the fourth thing is to prepare. A patriarch mm. is supposed to prepare, which we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. now, it's, it's our job as patriarchs, it's our job is to, to help our children find, follow, and finish their God-given purpose. Mm. Help them to discover 
to develop and then to deploy their gift to the world. You know, you mm. look at the patriarchs of old when they brought their when they brought their sons into the house right before they died. You're gonna do this. Mm. You're gonna do that. They didn't give them no choices. They go go be happy. Hey, we, we, we're one of the only cultures, man, that do that. In other cultures of this world, man, no, you're gonna be an engineer. You're gonna go be an architect. Mm. Dad, dad, I don't like math and science. We'll learn it. <laughs> This is what our family does. This is what we do. Mm. You know, you know, so our job is to prepare and help shape and help mold our next generation. Because listen, man, at most we have 120 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know many effective people that live over 120 years. 120 years, that's not a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The scope, there's not a lot of time. So you have 120 years to prepare for the next generation to const and here's what my what my love, my buddy says. My buddy says it's not about passing the torch, it's about lighting the torch for other people. Mm, that's it. That's big. It's not giving it away. It's just lighting somebody else's. And guess what? As you light somebody else's, then you got more than one light to kind of guide the way. That's the point. Because I still need to see too. I ain't, yes. I ain't, I'm not going yet. I'm, mm. I'm, not, I'm not passing you the torch. No, brother, I'm going to light your torch so you can see. Now we both see. Now, like you said, now both of us can see the, see the way. And the last thing, the last piece. That's deep. That's deep. Mm -hmm. The last piece, man, is to avoid passivity. Mm. To avoid passivity to be intentional about everything I just said, to be intentional about, about being a pattern, to be intentional about providing for your family, giving a vision for the family, being intentional about protecting and being intentional about preparing, to be intentional about these things, to wake up every morning with the mindset, hold on, man, there's, I'm, every day I'm, I'm developing my replacements. That's, mm. that's, again, that's a leadership principle. If, 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 if I'm, not, if I'm not building my replacements, if I'm not teaching my replacements, if I'm not mentoring at home, then something's wrong. That's mm. something wrong. If I'm not coach teaching and mentoring at my house, bro, something is wrong. My I'm children get to mimic everything that I say and do. My I'm children building my replacements. Everything I say and do. You know what I mean? Building my replacements. Man, I heard uh, Patrick Lumumba, he's a speaker. I think he's out of South Africa. He mm -hmm. said, true success is when my successor succeeds. Like, That's it. Is it, I mean, and that's what it is. And building my replacements, even, and I thought back to the analogy you gave about it's not passing the torch, it's lighting the torch of someone else. And the yeah. reason that you light someone else's torch, and ultimately the goal is to light as many torches as you can, because yeah. eventually your torch is going to blow out. Come on. So when your torch blows out, you want to have all these other torches that are lighting the path so that when yours blows out, Nobody really knows that your torch is out because everything is well lit. That, come on, brother. You, come on, you said something right there. Mm. <laughs> you, said, you said something right there. But more, even, I, and I love that. But then guess who gets the credit for lighting all those torches? Mm. And the, you, get, you get the credit for lighting all those torches. So, brother, that's a beautiful thing. But, but you know, check this out. And I think this is something that we have, to, um, we have to think about a little bit as well. And you mentioned something there, the concept of credit, right? And I think yeah. sometimes a lot of us restrict what we can do or we don't do as much as we can do because we might not get the credit right so i want to ask you do you know the names of your great great grandparents off the top of your head no of course not okay do you know the names of your great grandparents top of your head nope do you know the names of your grandparents top of your head maybe two of them yep Very okay true yep. okay so stop and you, you think about this that's your direct family right Good. And so after two generations above you, you really don't have much information you don't know, you don't know the names of. And right. unless your great or great, great grandparents have bridges named after them or schools named after them, or there was something or stories passed down specifically about them, yeah. honestly, after two or three generations, even in our own family, we yeah. honestly kind of forget a whole lot of the nuances of them. And so as it pertains to being remembered and getting credit, that credit and that memory will fade at some point, right? Exactly. But those concepts and those principles that you instill right. in the generations to come, they might not remember that it came from my great, 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 great grandfather, but right. because my great, 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 great grandfather instilled the pattern, the provision, the protection, they prepared and they avoided the passivity. Those mm -hmm. things are embedded into their psyche, into their DNA that then yeah. gets replicated for generations to come. So technically, you might not on a personal level get credit, but your job is well done, my good and faithful servant, because you've exactly. lit these torches 
that are now lighting the path to go forward, whether you get credit or not. So fellas, I want you to think about this. Don't restrict what you can do just because you're not necessarily getting the credit. Just because you didn't get credit on the work or just because you didn't get credit as the author of, if you can right. take a step back and look and see that, you know what, stuff is going forward and I have this internal satisfaction knowing that I did what I was supposed to do, hmm. that I did what I was supposed to do, you know, carry on. That's but it. don't restrict just because you don't get credit. I think that's something that personally we all have to come to grips with. I even think about, you know, you're wearing your fraternity uh, sweatshirt and I have, you know, my fraternity representative over here and I stop and I think about it. I mean, sometimes even with fraternal organizations, we don't do as much as we can do collectively yeah. as organizations because, you know, it's not led by my organization or it's not led right. by your organization. So, and eh, we'll show up, but we're not going to really do all that we can do because we yeah. can't take the picture, check the box and get the credit for it. And I think that's yeah. something we have to be honest about, look in the mirror and realize that everything you're not going to get credit for, and that's okay. And that's okay. You got to be okay with that. You got to mm -hmm. be okay with it. You be and that comes with maturity, man. Yes. Yes. That comes, that comes with maturity. Like I say, the older I get, dude, the, I'm going to say this. I don't remember most of the names of those people that pivoted me. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't remember Absolutely. their names, but I thank God for them. Absolutely. I thank God for them. And, 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 and again, and, and in the kingdom, the kingdom is giving them credit for it. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I don't remember their names. Mm -hmm. And they don't remember my name, but they knew they had an obligation to turn this young man around. They said they had an obligation to point to, to point me in a different direction, to change my trajectory. And guess you, what? And we have that same obligation, man. And you know what they did for you? They they lit your torch. They lit my torch, brother. They lit mm. my torch. Amen. Mm. It, was, it was my obligation to light others, man. That's it. We have no choice. And, and so, dude, I mean, you're, you're, you got so much going on, so much that their brothers need to check out. So what's the best way for the brothers to check out what you have going on, to follow you, to grab one of your devotionals, to grab one of your books, to book you to come speak? What's the best way for folks to connect with Jackson Drum Guru, brother? So, so my, my website is www.jacksondrumguru.com. Go to my website. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... You can check out some of the things we have going on, things we've done. Uh, you can go to, uh, of course, I'm on all the social media sites, mm -hmm. uh, Instagram, I'm Jackson Drum Guru, I'm in Facebook. Um, again, go to Amazon for, for my books. I mm -hmm. uh, just type in my last name, Drum Guru, and you'll see some of my books come up there. And again, just reach out to me on, on, uh, on my website, man, jacksondrumguru.com, and I, trust me, I'll respond back. I'm happy to hear from anybody, happy to jump in anywhere, trust me. Awesome. So fellas, literally, and I'm gonna have that in the show notes, jacksondrumgool.com and make sure to follow Jackson Drumgool on Facebook and Instagram. Reach out to the brother, man. Grab some of his stuff. Check him out. I mean, just go back and forth. Remember, he was the national father of the year in 2013. Come on, man. The brother got the, the devotional. They call me daddy. I mean, come on, man. Just call me daddy. Fellas, reach out. Now, I know ladies are there too. So y'all reach out as well because I know y'all are listening and paying attention direct the, your dude to check out Jackson Drum Ghoul and connect and, and grab some stuff, man. Support this brother. He's a wealth of information. Yeah, hey, 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 grab the book for, for, the, uh, for the father in your life. Grab the book for the dad in your life, your nephew, your, your son, if he has a, if he has a child or, or expectant. Mm -hmm. Again, this, this is good information. It's not really, it's like, it's not about me, man. It's beyond me. And it's for the sake of our seed. Mm, for the sake of our seed. What a, man, it's not a better way to end this, brother. Man, I, I thank you so much for taking time in the middle of the night over in Korea to chop it up with the Black Fathers Now family. And, you know, I thank you for you. And, brother, please continue doing what you're doing. It's bigger than you. This is a purpose. This is a mission. Yeah. And guess what? It, it's going to continue until we don't have any more light left on our torch. And at that <laughs> point, hopefully, it's well done, our good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you, brother. Love you, brother. I love you and appreciate everything you're doing, Doc. Man, love you too, man. I appreciate you, brother. And fellas, 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 make sure to follow Jackson Drumgool. Visit jacksondrumgool.com. And I'll definitely have his contact information in the show notes. Follow Jackson Drumgool on Facebook and Instagram. And let him know you heard about him on Black Fathers Now. Grab some of his books. Grab this latest book, They Call Me Daddy. I mean, come on. Y'all grab it. Grab it, grab it, support him, and let him know that you heard about him on Black Fathers Now. <laughs> and as always, as always, fellas, make sure to follow Black Fathers Now on all the social media outlets. Visit blackfathersnow.com. Make sure to share this episode, share this episode and others as we're here to really help to pour into the brothers because we want to make excellence in black fatherhood the new average. 
excellence in black fatherhood is going to be the new average and we're doing our part to add to that all right well hey as always fellas make sure make sure make sure to be blessed well and wise and i'll holla at you peace peace